Forest grows with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure. And Rose discover, Rose discover. Hello. That was Sally the Lavender Owl. She just wanted to say hello. Hello from me. It's the 14th of December and caravan life is beginning to become challenging. Even more so, it was the first proper frost of the year, of the season, last night. In the caravan it got down to, oh that's okay, only one degree. Um, but compared to outside, that's quite warm. Hmm. I ought to put Christmas decorations up soon. It's looking a bit spartan and bare in here. We can soon sort that out. <laughs> Pudding. Ah, there we go. Done. It's time to introduce the first fungus. The, uh, Mycelium, the first fungal aspect to the forest garden. Two days ago I received my rather extensive and expensive plant order from the Agroforestry Research Trust, which is one of the places I get the range of plants for the forest garden while setting it up. And one of the exciting things, I've never had these before. As recommended, I kept them in the fridge in the refrigerator to preserve them. I made from 15 to 25 painstakingly collected native edible mitochondria species. This mix will provide suitable mitochondrial partners for any tree, boosting tree growth and encouraging the rapid development of a diverse, healthy and living soil. In the long term, given the right environment, these mitochondria may also start to form edible mushrooms. That's the main reason I want them, to get food from them, but they'll be very good for the healthy soil network so the trees can exchange nutrients and talk to each other. Although the soil is pretty good here because I haven't disturbed it or dug it very much and over the previous centuries it already has quite a good fungal network, although seldom any edible species pop up. So this, that's, that's what these are for. I shan't list off the various species that are in here now, but in time, as they pop up when the conditions are correct, I'll tell you then. So I'll take those from the refrigerator, tuck them under my arm, and let's, let's go outside. Ooh, I ought to swap my crocs for my booties. What else will I need? I'll need a spade and a tripod. Glorious sunny afternoon. It's supposed to be pretty wet tomorrow, so today's a perfect time for working outside and planting things. Look, I built a cover for this latest beehive because it's really the wet that finishes bees off in the winter. They can cope with the cold quite well, but not wet conditions, so that should keep all the rain off. Down to the greenhouse. I'll leave the spade and things there for a moment. How cold was it outside last night? It was, oh my goodness, minus six degrees centigrade. That's blooming cold. I was a bit concerned about my plants that were in pots, that it was going to freeze in the greenhouse. 
boots, not very well insulated. Ah, the door is stuck. Ah, it's moles again. They've uh, excavated right into the path of the sliding door. Yeah, it was so cold that I did all I could to try and heat it. I put my old wood burning stove in the middle, despite the fact it didn't have a door, and lit a fire in there and put the flue out of the roof. I wasn't too concerned that it was going to catch the plastic alight or melt it because there's a double skinned flue which never gets very hot. And I lit this paraffin lamp which has now gone out. I also made this homemade space heater. There are lots of instructions about how to make these on the internet. Oh, that's pretty warm. Oh, that's good. It's two terracotta pots, one inside the other. The inner one is smaller and has a hole in the top and the outer one ideally shouldn't have a hole in the top. So I put that piece of pot over it and oh, it's really hot, nice. And underneath that, I put a basic paraffin burner. And that's actually working rather well. Although I doubt it has much effect on the size of this greenhouse. Let's see what it was last night. Oh, six degrees. It's been a success. Although I'm not sure if it was the wood burning stove or the paraffin space heater or the lantern that made the difference. I imagine it was the fire that made the most difference. Look at that, lemons in December. What's going on? Hello, lovely lemon tree. Look at you beauty. Look at that. Oh yes. Thank you very much. Oh, oh that smells gorgeous. I could just bite into that. I won't. Um, it might make me make a funny face. I shall save that for later for making, well, various things actually. First I squeeze the juice into warm water and then I use the skin for another drink. And then once I've used the skin for the second drink, mm. I then use the remaining skin to soak in vinegar and make cleaning spray. Many uses for a lemon. I should say that I don't heat the greenhouse normally. This is the first time in five years I've heated it because I was concerned about my new plants. But the reason it doesn't usually freeze in here is because of the earth all around it that works like a, a heat sink, a thermal mass that heats up during the day, radiating heat back at night. Anyway, back to those mushrooms. Here's part of my plant order that I'll get in the ground before too long. Some nice clumping edible bamboo there, that's one of my treasures. These mushroom spores need to be planted around a bare-rooted tree. This is a replacement white mulberry tree because sadly one of my mulberries, a white one, didn't make it last year during that long, hot, hot, deadly summertime. Although that's only one of 70 trees that didn't make it, so I'm not doing too badly. There are enough mushroom spores here to inoculate the roots of about 12 different bare-rooted trees. But I'm just going to treat the roots of one tree to start with, just to see how it's done. Oh, here's the poor old specimen. Hmm, not doing too well. Well, that's an understatement, really. a label for ground nuts, which I've also ordered and have in a pot in the greenhouse. They're going to grow up the mulberry tree, hopefully. All right, come on, old friend. Back you come. I 
feel really bad digging the old tree up, even though it's dead. Having said that, the roots aren't dead, the roots are still a little bit springy. I think below the graft, the rootstock is still alive. I'll give it another chance. I'll plant it in a pot in the greenhouse and see if it comes back to life. Right, I'll put that to one side. This white mulberry, this Morus alba, one of the main reasons I'm planting it is not just for the berries, it's because the leaves are pretty high in protein. And from this mother tree, I'm going to take cuttings in the springtime and then let the chickens forage for the leaves themselves. I must make an extra effort to water this new tree this summertime. I think it got a little bit neglected. That's the problem with planting so much at once and being over ambitious that I can't always take care of it all. I don't think you've thoroughly thought this through, young man. Which eventually, once it's established, it won't need taken care of so much, but just when things are getting set up. All right, let's see what this pack contains. Look at that. Mixed with biochar. For a large bare-rooted tree like this one, it recommends two tablespoons or about 20 grams sprinkled in the hole. So I'm going to use my measuring spoon. One. Two. Beautiful. Seal up that packet. I'll put that back into my refrigerator until I'm ready to plant the next tree which may or may not be today, depending on various things. Right. Here you go, new mulberry. Ooh, there are a healthy number of worms in here as well. That's one thing I hate about digging with the spade is, unfortunately, sometimes there are Casualties. I feel very bad about that, but because I don't have large claws for hands for digging with, I'm not sure what else to do. All right, give it the shake just to make sure there are no air pockets around the roots to get frosted. Right, I'll just get the soil level back up to where it was when it was dug up a couple of days ago. I can see the line where it was. I mustn't forget to water this in in a minute as well. Right, about 11 more to go. If I've still got your attention, then just very quickly, we'll have a look in the toilet and shower shed to see if my olive oil heater has worked overnight. It's now two in the afternoon but at four o'clock yesterday afternoon, I lit. There's now a shower curtain. I did actually obtain a shower door, but that didn't fit. It was two feet too high. So it's now just there, creating a windbreak for the propane heater. But this, uh, temporary place for the wood burning stove. It hasn't got a flue so I couldn't light it properly. Oh yes, they're still burning. I just filled a an old grill tray with some low grade olive oil, but still much cleaner burning than paraffin or lamp oil. And I punched a hole in the top of four jam jar lids, poked through some cotton wig that I, <laughs> cotton wig, cotton wick that I had left over from making candles, and lit them. And that, that's very pleasantly warm. I don't have a thermometer in here, so I can't tell how cold it got overnight, but I know that the pipes didn't freeze, which they would have otherwise. 
So that's great. And it looks like it's hardly used any oil. Very pleased indeed, very good. Right, okay, hope you have a good day whatever you're up to and see you soon. Bye.